Almost every case before me, when someone applies for you to defend it, there's no way of knowing how they'll do. We know he served three and a half years and how he's done. And listening to him this morning, I believe that he has insight now. And I don't think he'd go out and do the same thing again in anyone's name. And then I go back to Mr. Rottenberg. On April 10, 2012, Mr. Rottenberg wrote me a letter in which he says, I am the victim of a horrific crime which Shaul Spitzer has been better perpetrated. Still, I write asking that the court show leniency in sentencing. He's all but a child, 18 years old, and his actions were the product of his immaturity. He's not an evil person. He comes from a good family, his family and mine been close over the years. In my judgment, putting Shaul in jail for a long time will serve little purpose. He's already learned his lesson to think before he acts. He's not likely to engage in criminal mischief again, and his extended imprisonment will not help my burns to heal. As the court knows, I've reached a settlement with the new square community. Unfortunately, Mr. Rottenberg saying today that they didn't live up to it. I wish there was something I could do about that, but there's not. There was a $3.5 million settlement, and he told me it was very important that peace be achieved and that he could move on. And he did get a rabbinical decree permitting his children to be educated and not blacklisted and his, son, his children to be married as well. So it appears to me, at least facially, the New Square community has lived up to its commitment. And he says that, I know that Saul must be punished. However, extended incarceration in this case will in no way improve my situation or quality of life. That's a letter he wrote to me. Uh, it wasn't that really long ago when you think about it. And so I think for that and the fact that I was very impressed with uh, Mr. Shaw Spitzer's speaking to the court today, and I, I, I'll confess, it changed my mind. I will grant them the beautiful offender, which I had no intention of doing when I came in here this morning. None whatsoever. You know? All right, that was constitutional. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I have to sentence him as an e thumb as the most I could, so I'd sentence him to e thumb, which he really has the time to serve him. Okay, okay but. Gentlemen, be seated, one, please. Saul Swift, one to third to four years, that's the sentence. He's already served, but that's the sentence. One to third. Saul Swift, you've taken a pledge of you have been sent. You are entitled to know what your rights are with respect to an appeal from a youthful offender adjudicator in the event you decide you want to appeal. These are your rights. You have a right to appeal to the Pelican in the second apartment within 30 days and an addition upon proof of your financial inability to retain counsel and to pay the cost and expense of the appeal. You have a right to apply to the Pelican in the second apartment for the assignment of counsel and police to prosecute the appeal of the foreclosure and to dispense with print. The appellate division second apartment is located at 45 Monroe Place, Brooklyn, New York. Sir, do you understand what I just been read to you? Yes, sir. Counselors, will you remain on case for 30 days? Yes, we will. Sir, so step in, officer, state charge. Just an aside, Mr. Hoffman, I might suggest in the future that you uh, run any letters you get to send through counsel because it did serve to inflame me this morning, but I was. Very concerned that I might end up be giving a bill to Mr. Spitzer for the way I felt in the, as a result of your letter. Okay, thank you. Thanks, John.